Good morning. Welcome. How's my audio? Does it work today? <clears throat> Hopefully everything's all good. So I've been thinking a lot about my project and really trying not to work on it without the cameras on, even though it's so much easier to work on projects without cameras watching you. <laughs> I am dedicated to filming me work on this for better or worse. So I resisted the urge, um, but I did, I was playing. This guy right here is mounted on the side of the world. And I think these ribs are going to be perfect. I however am really nervous because it is stressful. Whoops, sorry. It is very stressful trying to sew through the rigid boning. It's meant to be sewn through, but you hear the ka-clunk, ka-clunk as I'm sewing. And then also you heard when I ran out of thread how big of a bang <laughs> it did. And so it's kind of intimidating and very stressful sewing this stuff in. And so I'm gonna keep going on this, but I also wanted to add, um, not just horizontal boning, but I wanted to add vertical boning so that I have a whole grid of structure and support to pin not only little figurines and houses and such onto, and yeah, so I, I'm definitely gonna need the up and down grids. How I'm gonna sew that, I may be just skipping stitching and then skipping over the ribs so that I'm just missing the stitches where all the ribs are. Rib is a good word for those boning chan. They're not channels. I didn't put any channels in. I just directly sewed the boning to the um, base layer. But every time the boning hits another piece of boning, I'm going to just skip it because unless it stabs through easy enough two layers of the hard plastic, but I haven't broken a needle yet knock on wood <laughs> I'm, I, I plan on breaking quite a few but it's still a scare you know it's stressful breaking needles but it's gonna be fun so that's the plan for this I'm gonna add some more layers of these circles before I add the vertical ones how many more layers that's a good question so I want to stop right about here, right after the shoulder curves, because this is still really circular, where once we get here, I feel like we're now in oval territory, and I want to go circle to the very last point that I can. Maybe here. Maybe here. Anyways, I gotta mark it out. And then I also have to figure out where the hands are going to come out. Because I want it to be a poncho, not a poncho, a cape. <clears throat> so I want the hands to be able to come out and either hold something or feel like they can rearrange the figures on the um, dress itself in the little world. Anyways, so my brain is kind of chewing on that because that's the next layer. And then also, this is my pattern right here. I was, one of the things that I'm coming up against, against, that's just naturally happening. Happening. Remember how I told you we're sewing on a cone? And so we're sewing straight lines onto a coned structure. And that even though it's just a quarter of an inch, it's going to like, it's straight on a curved thing and it's gonna act funny and that's why I'm fighting it. You can see, start to see what's happening. If, um, remember those tech decks, those little tiny skateboards? If you were to go and skateboard this, you would hit a stair, a stair, a, st a stair, and you would step down this pyramid. It's a step pyramid versus a smooth pyramid because every time you hit one of these ribs, it's, 
it flattens out. Now how I'm going to get a, around this so that it's not going to be an issue is I'm going to put an intermediary layer. Originally I was just going to starch the crap out of the top layer, but I feel like if I do an innered layer of um, starched cotton and then on top of that put my outer layer, I can soak starch this and then spray starch the outer layer because the issue that I'm kind of worried about over starching the outer layer is that this is a lovely dark green even though the color isn't like half as pretty on the screen as it is in real life. Um, I don't want a powdery white chalky coating on it because starch used lightly you're not going to notice but if you like soak it and use a lot of it it's going to give you a like powder layer because that's kind of what starch is. So you have to just kind of think about this. Okay, welcome Danda's Junk, 45th Clown. Evening for, for some of us, well, evening 45th Clown. Michael Snell is here, welcome back. And 45th Clown is letting me know the audio is good. Good, okay. Otherwise I've been rambling for a minute. Um, DJ Stumpy's here. Hi, DJ Stumpy. Um, 45th Clown, could you use two inch boning in a jig or would that be too fiddly? I don't know if they sell two inch boning to tell you the honest truth. I think once you're getting into anything thicker than a half inch, half inch is normal. Quarter inch is typical. Um, I have half inch because I wanted it bigger. Um, once you're getting past that, it's starting to get into um, horsehair braids, other structure and support. Sorry, I'm distracted by Toby. He came over here and then ran over there. So um, I think this is just going to be fiddly in general, but it's going to be fun. So I, I want to make a game plan of how many more ribs I have to put in because I although it is super stressful putting them in because of the fighting the curve thing. It's an invisible struggle that nobody talks about, but it is. It's why sewing's hard. You don't know why it's hard? It's hard because you're trying to meet straight edges to curved edges and then you just kind of got smoosh it. But how do you put that in instructions on in a packet? <laughs> but... um I want as many of these as I can get because it's going to give me more structure to attach things in general. But I need to have space for my arms. Space for my arms. That's what I'm thinking about. My lovely vintage cape has arm spaces for my arms to come out. I think, so the outside of the cape is going to be more practical. The inside of the cape is going to be as much structure as I can hide in there. So it will just literally be the slits to get the arms through on this layer, but the top layer, I think I'm definitely going to do a flap to make it a cape. And it looks like you really just need your elbows. It needs to be elbow level. So I'm gonna measure what this is. And to the top of the pocket, I think. And that's gonna be the, where I'm gonna leave a big hole of spacing, of boning, so that I don't have to cut around boning at that section. And then I'm going to jump through the top. So, measurements. just realized I can bring this to me. Okay. 
<sighs> Let me mark this with a B. Right about there. And then top of the pocket is right about here. All right, I do like this right here and here. So it looks like I can get another one, two, three more rows at the bottom, and then one, two rows above that. And I skip this space here. Yep, that's my general game plan. I say let's do it. Let me get this out of the way. Michael Schnell, how do you pattern things on yourself? Do you actually, do you use actual measurements or do you have a different technique? Okay, there's no way, there's a million ways to get to the same conclusion, okay? So like patterning, you can drape, you can do pattern drafting, you can, when you're pattern drafting, you can use the pivot method, the slash and spread method, you can, Yes, I do know how to pattern. I used to make wedding dresses and I would get a list of measurements and then we take those measurements and turn them into the dress, into the pattern, then cut it out and make the dress and do the adjustments from there. So flat patterning is my preferred method because I'm that's what I did every day for a couple years there. But draping is 100% a valid way to do it and this is a draped pattern. <clears throat> that I did draping it directly on this mannequin. And then I have two mannequins that have my measurements. The one that's wearing the Princess Leia dress in the background, that one I made out of two-part polyurethane foam, expanding foam, back in college. So it's a mold of my body and then this one right here, I made based off of that one, but I took the measurements and cut it out of craft foam, well, floor mat foam from um, Harbor Freight. And I made this dress form that is accurate to my measurements and not necessarily generally my shape, it's a very flattened out dress form, but the lines all end up where they need to be and it's really good for pattern drafting off of it because I have all my seams and stuff like that right there. So I do flat pattern, but I also do drape and do a combination of the both methods depending on what I'm trying to achieve. So I hope that answers things, but I love these questions. Please keep them up. Um, but I'm constantly trying things on, constantly. Last stream I kept trying that on because it changes every time and it, it's a tactile experience and you don't really know how things are gonna lay until they're on a real body versus this thing that doesn't even have arms. Shh, she didn't hear me. <laughs> um, DJ Stumpy says, I sat here trying to ease in sleeves on my Red Dwarf Rimmer jacket. I'm using 
McCall's M4745 Civil War pattern and having issues. Apparently others have found issues with McCall's. Do you have any tips? Okay, so line up the sleeve from armpit to armpit. The under part, there's no gathering, no easing. Match up the dart, the darts, not the darts, the, um, it's okay, I'm only live. What are those things called? The notches. <laughs> you mark your darts with notches, but you match up your notches. There should be like a two notches in the front and one three notches in the back or one in the front and two in the back. Anyway, smaller is more towards the center front, more notches goes towards the back of the garment. So whatever they marked it with, the notch in the front, notch in the back, all of this, no easing. Now from the armpit to the other armpit, that pattern's going to be significantly bigger than the measurement that you're trying to sew it in at the top of the armhole. This would be true for any woven pattern that you're going to put a sleeve on um, because we have an arm that bends and a shoulder that pokes out so this isn't as simple as just attaching a tube to a piece of fabric otherwise your arm would go straight out and there wouldn't be any room for bending moving etc so in order to do that you have to ease in the cap of your sleeve and you can do that by doing technically two rows of e-stitching, but e-stitching is a pain in the butt, especially when you're a brand new sewer and you don't really know what you're doing. So what I would suggest doing is taking a needle and thread, basting from notch to notch, and kind of pulling it to gather it, pin it down into the armhole, just kind of smooshing all of that gather in, but push the ruffled bits that when you sew through it is going to cause a tuck or a pleat or the ugly part that you don't want to include in the cap of your sleeve just kind of smoosh it out of your way so that where you're sewing directly is a flat line like even while you're sewing you smoosh it um, put it so that you're gathering your sleeve so the part that is gathering into the armhole is on the bottom of the sewing machine so that the feed dogs can push the fabric through faster than the top fabrics going through. It'll help you gather and um, iron. So press it. You can press it before you sew and after, or you can just wait till after and you just kind of smoosh out all your extra wrinkles away from your seam line and it will be a whole lot smoother. You can get a couple inches um, eased in one inch is typical for a sleeve in general just for no extra extra puffiness so it is going to be bigger than it's supposed to be okay so it does have to get gathered down yes you are taking this fabric and gathering it but you just kind of smoosh it because <laughs> it's a loose weave of fabric and you just kind of smoosh it and you won't get those tucks that's what easing is and if you do see one tuck whatever okay get it stitched and then after you've stitched it, go to that where the little mess up is. Like when I did my Princess Leia um, collar a couple weeks ago, there was a couple tucks in there. And I just went a couple stitches before, a couple stitches after, ripped out the stitching just at that spot, smooshed it all down, and then re ran it through the sewing machine, which got rid of that one little bump. So if you get it in first, at least it's in, and then address each of the individual areas that might be an issue. You might have a couple, like two or three, especially if you're brand new. But you can go back over and just kind of smoosh them flat. I know. You just kind of smoosh it and you smoosh it and then it'll work. But it's like an art, not a science. So good luck with that. But I understand what you're doing. Don't try and do e-stitching on your sewing machine. Just use a gathering stitch like a needle and thread to get it into the right place. Pull it tight. Pin it in and then just kind of make it work. Hope that helps. <sighs> I'm really avoiding pulling this out. <laughs> I really am. Let me just do it, let me do it. Okay. I'm gonna mark my where I have to stop because I will forget things and I will get on a roll.
this arm being on the wrong side is really bothering me. Okay. DJ Stumpy, so the gathered sleeve face down on the machine. Oh, I'm getting some, and I've tried gather stitches, but I guess it's practice. Yeah, it's practice. It's really smooshing it, and at least if you get it stitched and together, you can at least address each individual point on the sleeve, just smooshing it flat. But I understand your pain. You kind of have to do it. This is one of those things that... It's easier to have somebody showing you and there with you because I learned how to do this in a classroom setting and I definitely appreciate my teachers for that. But also at the same time, made my own mistakes, that's for sure. All right, so I am going to use my method of lining up my boning rib with the plate on my sewing machine and going around from there until I get up to my Pin height, so at least I'm being productive while I'm so while I'm All right, center back. Okay, well this spool has seen better days, but it's okay. It's getting used. You know, if you're really struggling with the sewing machine, hand base the whole thing in. Um, thread is just like pinning. It's kind of easier to control. When you're really struggling with things, sometimes, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but reverting back to hand sewing gives you so much flexibility and control over your project that you can't get with the machine stitching. That's why hand sewing still will always be a thing. But get it stitched in by hand and then go back over and use the sewing machine. Try that, see if that helps. Because like I said, once it's stitched together, you can address each of the issues individually and it'll be a lot easier. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Even at the costume shop, all the time, there's just times where I'm like, ah, this is a, this dress is too heavily beaded. I have to use a needle and thread, <laughs> you know? Or there is, how did they get through all these, like, well, needle and thread, I can make this happen, but I don't know how this is gonna fit through a sewing machine. It's just not, you know? So, yes. Michael Schnell, what is a good practice fabric? I know how to use Final fabric, flat final fabric right away. What is something cheap where the experience gained can translate the most onto other fabrics? Okay, good point. Let me get this started and I'll think about that. Because I was thinking the other day when you guys asked me what is a good beginner project? And um, my answer there was a lot of different things that you could do as a beginner because it's more about, like I had the one dress, it was just one pattern piece and two seams and then you finish the edges. But the thing that's tricky about that dress is the fabrics choices. How do you finish the edges? There's always weird places you, you can grow. Um, I really enjoy working with leathers and knits and laces and all these quote unquote complicated hard fabrics, but I love them and they're easy in different ways. Um, people typically start with woven fabrics, just basic cot quilting cotton and stuff like that because it has the straight grid that you're not trying to fight. You can tear it on the straight of grain and um, 
it irons, it sews easily through a sewing machine. You're not gonna be fighting with it through a sewing machine at all. So typically quilting fabrics are a basic woven fabric and they can get you started. So that you can use muslin is a cheap fabric. Um, my, this Harbor Freight um, canvas from their painter's tarp. I use that to make Princess Leia poncho, so. That one's the hood is complicated otherwise I would say it's a great beginner problem pattern but the hood's a little complicated and so hey I still have the stitch settings yay um, but the fabric choice that you do on a project has just as big of an impact on how quote unquote easy the project's going to be or how hard it's going to be. This fabric is amazing. I absolutely love working with it. One of my favorite fabrics ever is um, wool crepe de chine. That stuff in those 40s dresses, you just take a steamer and it sucks to your measurements. Like it just holds every curve in the right way. And it's like my favorite fabric. Wool crepe to sheen, it just, you can't really find it at the fabric stores as much, but online is now not as big of an issue. Mm. Straight line onto a curved surface. Gotta smoosh it. Oh, and once I start, like I'm already getting into a lot of ribs being shoved into this side. Once I start getting the straight lines going this way, <laughs> we're gonna laugh when I'm trying to put this through the sewing machine. It may end up getting hand stitched. Who knows? I'm not sure how that's gonna go. I know it's possible. I don't know how practical. Good practice fabric, cheap fabric and free fabric. Cheap fabric, thrifted bed sheets, big pieces that are left over from old projects, upcycled clothing. There's a million places you can harvest fabric from. My Princess Leia belt was from my couch. <laughs> that leather came from an old leather couch that Okay, I was given $20 and told to find a nice couch and I found this gorgeous leather one, brand new, at the thrift store for $25. Oh no, I went $5 over my budget, whatever. I bought this couch, it was $25. And the thing is, is it had to be Toby, like the stipulations I was given, it had to be Toby proof because Toby's very hard on things. It had to be leather and it had to be comfortable. And so this couch hit all of those things was within my price point and I could not be mad at Toby for being on this couch because I spent so little on it and it was nicer than the beds that I got him. And I think I spent $60 on his one of his beds. So I, like his bed was more expensive than the couch so I could not be mad at him being on the couch. Granted, eventually he wore through one of the cushions and so the couch was left unusable, but when I was getting rid of it, instead of just getting rid of it, the whole thing to the dump, I I stripped it and I got all the leather from it. And I got huge pieces that are matched and like the back of it was like perfect shape. And so I've been using that leather for millions of projects. I don't have to stress out about leather in my projects because I have good scrap leather that I don't feel guilty that I had to, an animal had to suffer to be in this ugly project, you know? it's recycled, it's reused, and it's like it's third life now. So like I'm very creative when it comes to where I get my materials because 
often most of my projects are like, I'm not buying anything from this pro for this project, but I'm doing it anyways. So free fabric, used fabric, harvested fabric, reduce, reuse, and recycle the most you can. Like, and then you have to be careful because sometimes you get this amazing fabric and none of your projects <laughs> seem like you want to waste the fabric on because you're like this fabric's so gorgeous I don't want it to be an ugly thing that I just throw away and give to the thrift store it needs to be something worthy of the fabric and then it sits there forever and never getting used so I have to make sure that I don't fall into that trap but then my mother goes through her fabric collection all of a sudden I have way more fabric than I need <laughs> so be careful Oi, this stuff So I was debating whether just doing a straight zigzag versus the three-step zigzag was going to be the better option for attaching these ribs. But if I measured it and at the, the wide zigzag, it is eight stitches per inch. And on the um, three-step zigzag, there is six stitches per inch. So even though there's less stitches per inch, it does give more coverage and it's my needles getting less damaged because it's not it has two less stitches than the other way and therefore less likely to break and less wear and tear and I'm getting a whole lot less skip stitches when I do the three-step zigzag say that and then watch it all start skipping like crazy Um, DJ Stumpy, there's a guy on here called Manso that he has some cool fat quarter projects. Maybe there's a good starting place? Yeah. Fat quarters are great pieces. Like, they're just a piece of fabric. You can do one project and be done. Gotta appreciate that. When I was little, I used to love going through my grandma's sewing books and crafting books and finding little projects. Oh, here, I need this, this, this. Let me see what I can make. I love kits for that very reason. It has all the things you need. <laughs> I just realized I left my little mouse pinned in here and now he's just gonna stay there for the moment because it's making me laugh. But I have to make sure he's lined up. Hey, get your hand out of there, buddy. Here in the UK, I use Pound Fabrics Online, a handy place for end of line and other bits. That's awesome. I am all for buying fabric by the pound. I just don't tend to do it online, again, because I don't know what I'm actually getting. But there's this place in LA that we're on like 9th and Mina, I want to think. Anyways, Michael Levine's. It's, I don't think you can, it's there anymore. I haven't been in years since the panorama. But they had their clearance fabric was across the street at their upholstery fabrics. And you could buy their fabric by the pound. And I used to get the best suiting weight fabrics and like pinstripes. Oh my gosh. It, like things you couldn't find at Joann's. Bruno, what's wrong? Why are you crying? Uh, trying to not overthink about it but it's really fighting that curve Okay, it's not the worst sewing through two layers, but I think this is gonna be a bumpy ride doing the long. I'm worried about it. I already am. Alright, got 
another row still going. How much more? I think I can get at least two more rows in. I'm very much twisted. It's okay. Guess that's half the fun. I'm starting to second guess myself. Where am I? Right there. Okay. I'm driving Braille here. A sewing machine attachment for this very issue. Is it right here? Hold on. You know what, I'd have to look up a tutorial on how to stick this in there, I forgot. But that's what this is, is basically, you put it down there and it you can line up your stuff as you're quilting. Huh, okay, well I'll have to figure that out, but I'm just gonna like, finish this, it's been working so far. Not half bad. Uh-oh, what are you doing, okay. seeing any skip stitches on this three-step zigzag so I feel like that is significantly better than this regular wide zigzag. <clears throat> but I don't know if that's how I'm gonna attach the long ones. I think I may just do a straight stitch. We'll see. I'm making these things up as I go. Okay, driving blind. I mean, braille. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm just gonna cut this before I get to the end. Jeez, it really sounds like I'm snapping a bone. <laughs> well, I am, but still. have an experience making shoes or shoe covers how about gloves yes yes I do I have made plenty of shoe covers um, here in this video right here hold on the red shoes Okay, so I have made shoe covers. I've made, um, so for Smosh, for their, um, excuse my language, their fuckboy music video that they did, I made custom shoes for Ian, Anthony, and everybody whose shoes you see in that, ep on, in that video, I made their shoes custom because we couldn't have any, um, branding lip images or logos and shoes were a huge part of that look so i did custom kicks for everybody and they turned out really amazing and it was super fun doing that so for a while there i was like "Ooh, i really want to get into shoe design this is a lot of fun but and then working at the costume shop i fixed a lot of shoes we built up shoes we made kiss boots um jane this is how i found out James and I found out that um, vinyl is not spray paintable. Leather is. Vinyl is not. Those kiss boots today are still haven't dri dried. Um, spectacles. Did you get to see the total clips this week, though? Aws through awesome spectacles. No, I did not. I did not get a chance to see it. I remember seeing it like when I was in elementary school, but I did not get to see it this go around. like sewing and but when I'm doing it I do, I'm like wait why do I like this again it's happening it's happening because when it's finished it's I feel the sense of accomplishment that's for sure This is really close. I can just get in one more row or I can stop this at my last, this be my last row. Part of me just wants to be done with this, but part of me knows that it'll be much better if I do one more row. Let's see, I'm thinking about it.
huh. Like I am like pushing you. I feel like can't see the reps that I'm doing. The <laughs> gotta stop and breathe. Um, <laughs> uh, Michael Snell. I'm hoping to do a whole cosplay someday. It has a lot of components, and I'm not quite sure where to start. Right, cosplays are great because. They give you reasons to craft and learn a whole bunch of weird new skills. <laughs> and there's a million ways to solve all the problems. Getting there, getting there. Ugh, shmoosh it and you shmoosh it. Go to the climbing gym after this. My fingers are ready to... Stop backstitching because it just doesn't work. I'm just sewing past where I need it to go. Okay. Get some space. I'm inside out. It needs to go this way. This is why it needs the up and down boning because it is all folding up onto itself. That is funny. These need to go flat like this. There we go. Now it's flat. And I will have to do rows like this. I'm going to stop there. I was going to go up one more row. But I am worried. I want some play and give a round where I um, have to attach it and sew it. Yeah, I want some wiggle room. some kind of weird loop.
this shape is only going to get more and more ridiculous. And I love it. Move this out the way for a second. Okay. Pin this flat so it just stays right there for a second. flat as I can. This is what Lining everything up. Where, here we go. I know this line has to be curved and I'm starting to mess it up, so I'm stopping before I commit to that. Because the shoulder factor, it's not as even. So if I measure straight down from here, it's gonna be different from here. I'm just gonna take a deep breath, escape to my coffee before committing to how messed this up this might be, and then I will think about it a little harder. All right. Uh, 45th clown. I ordered a sewing machine after yesterday's stream. It arrives tomorrow. Runs, ruins my excuse of I'll put that in the pile as hand sewing would take too long. Well, that's awesome. That's really awesome. That's exciting because a sewing machine is a very useful tool that is underappreciated and I really, really, really love my stupid sewing machine. Because let's be honest, if I'm really gonna hand sew it, it's not happening. Like I do, but I'm gonna try using my sewing machine first. But congratulations on your new sewing machine. Start with a pillow. Something easy, a pillow, a bag, pajama pants, something fun. Um. Michael Schnell, yes, I almost finished moving into my basement workshop. I can then get back to crafting and hope to start making more cosplay. That's awesome. I feel like having projects is how you get better. Like, yes, you can do something boring, but if you're going to wait to do that boring project before you allow yourself to do the fun projects, you're never going to get to the fun projects. So start with your hard cosplay. Do you the best you can and just keep redoing the pieces and making it better and better. But that's awesome. Um, Dan does junk. I haven't seen much hobgoblin cosplays, mostly green goblins. <laughs> um, same. I like the capes though. The orange is very striking. Um, Dan does junk. I've pretty much only done five cosplays totals, but three characters, three versions of Vegeta, Professor G, the scientist who designed the Death Gundam, and Death Scythe Gundam. Yeah, those were awesome projects, and you learned a lot, and now you have a full project to show for it. Um, yes, but cosplay is a great way to get into just costuming in general. I never considered myself a cosplayer because I worked at a costume shop, so I was costumes for everything but it's definitely fun to dress up as characters and then go to sack anime and such. So it's definitely fun. 
I'm 100% blaming you for the purchase. Pillowcase is actually the one I'm looking at for straight lines. Exactly. Um, you can also use a dull needle. Don't use the one you're going to do sewing. Um, doing um, sewing fabric with, but using an old needle or one that's your junk, you've decided is your junk practice needle. Um, print out those cutting exercises that they have for kids where they have like straight lines, curvy lines, zigzags, and then just go through the sewing machine, going down the lines, follow the straight line, follow the curvy line, follow the zigzag line. It's kind of fun. It's like driving a car and it's a fun practice. You can even do it on a piece of fabric where you draw some weird shaped lines just to get used to going and then going fast because once you start sewing, you it's boring and you want to go as fast as you can. Um, yeah, okay. I've distracted myself enough from this project. Let me get back to it. Hmm. It's easier to not. It's okay. silly shaped right now and I love it. Ah! <laughs> it's about to get way worse. It's about to get way, way, way worse. I'm just going to mark this with pins. I'm not going to try and marker it because that is a bad idea. All right, I have to pin only through the top layer of the fabric and not... Both layers so they don't accidentally attach them together. Sorry, I'm not talking into the microphone. <laughs> Yeah, that line feels right. Let me do the other side now. Okay. Stay. 
Okay. Let me just move this over here for a second. Um. <laughs> Dan does junk. I actually blame Odin for a lot of my purchases. That's funny. When I got to Odin's the other day, he has a new belt sand grinder. And I'm like, is that because Dan just got a new one, so you had to get a bigger one? And he laughed because <laughs> it wasn't, you weren't the reason that he got one, but <laughs> you were the reason he got thinking about one, and it made me laugh. Because, <laughs> yeah. Michael Smell, I only found Odin recently. Welp, I've been watching Bill Duran over punish props for a long time though oh yeah that's one of Odin's favorite is Bill Duran um, the leggings that go on top of the boots wait what's that for stirrups anyways um Oh, that's awesome, Dan. Okay, sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm just trying to avoid doing the pin because I'm not 100% certain of what I'm doing. So, oh look at us being. Okay, what's nice is that I can at least feel the pins underneath and I'll know if I'm in the right spot or not. full of pins. All right. I think I'm brave enough to do this. <laughs> Question is, is do I try and go in through the neck hole or do I keep it going the way I've been going? I'm going to keep going the way I've been going because at least it fits like this part will fit through there and I'm might have to take this off to get this one through there. <sighs> it's going to be crazy anyways. Let's just do it. Why am I putting it off? The inside is honestly looking really nice. Nobody's ever going to see this side. And because of that, it is definitely going to need straight boning. All right, let's do this. I am going to line up this with the bottom of my pins. Now let's do the tops. I'll do my tops and my pins. Okay, here goes nothing. If anything, I'll rip this out. It's or adjust it once I've got going. I had this one stupid cat suction cup magnet that was stuck on my sewing machine. And that was the best because as the needles came off of my project, they go directly onto that and then into my magnetic bowl. But I knocked it off the other day and now I really miss it. But I haven't used pins in a minute. This is so nerve-wracking. You 
you smoosh it and you smoosh it. And just smoosh it. <sighs> no breathing. I can breathe, I can breathe, I can breathe. DJ Stumpy says the three small dots on the sleeve for the gathering. I take the middle one is supposed to go to the shoulder area and the other two match the dots on the back and the front. Yes. Yes, exactly. It gives you orientation so that you know when you're gathering it ends up in the right spot. Top of the shoulder. There's a should be a front dart and a back dart. They're not darts, sorry. They're called um, notches. So there should be front notches and back notches. No gathering in this part because you don't want a gathered armpit. That is where you do not add any gathering when you're doing even the poofiest of sleeves. Now, from this notch to the center top notch, it gathers all down into this point. And from this top notch to the wherever the back notch is, it gathers into that point. So it should all just kind of smoosh in. Good luck. Breathe, Felicia. Ah. I can't, because I'm going to have to rip this all out. I already know. No. Determined not to. I don't know what I'm going to do if this doesn't go as planned. I'll rip it up. That's what I'll do. Did you guys see that needle fly? Getting back to where we started, let's see if our circle actually lines up. You know, like when you're cutting around an apple Did you, or an orange. Did you start and end in the same spot? Let's find out. Looks looking good so far. See how this turned out. Hi, 
Toby? How you doing, baby? crooked to me. That's because there is not another arm and it was crooked. Okay. This is where I want a laser level. I know one way to figure this out. Yep, this is an inch lower, right here. I got lower on this side. This is actually straight, right here is slightly lower. It's still the right cone shape, so I'm not hating it. I'm gonna do one more row above the top of this one right here. And now since I have this one in, I can drive Braille on it. <sighs> Put that there for a second. Okay. You really want challenge while crafting? Get a cat. Makes everything instantly more difficult. Yeah, no. Toby's my really good boy. He, Toby's a dog. He will sit and wait patiently for me to get a project. He knows not to sit on my fabric when I'm cutting it out on the floor. He learned that one young. He also knows that when I'm finished with the project, I will take my scraps and braid them into um, a toy for him to chew. <sighs> Spooky, on the other hand, my actual cat, he just sits and stares at me and judges me. He just gives me a judgmental glare. Like, are you sure you're doing it right? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's the worst part about Spooky, it's just the judgment. <sighs> she has a cat or two. Yes, I have two dogs and two cats. Toby, Bruno, Spooky, and Jack. Mm -hmm. For Hoblin, Goblin, look at a skill tree for cloaks. Also elf. Cloaks are fun, that's for sure. Hmm. The back dot seems too high if it's only the sleeve that gathers. I have reckon the pattern strange. Doesn't seem like enough fabric between the notch of the sleeve and the dot of the sleeve. Are the dots where you're supposed to start and finish the gathering? Like you're supposed to e-stitch in between the dots? I have to look at it. It's been forever since I've like, dealt with an actual commercial pattern which for better or worse they at least come with instructions when you make up your own patterns you have to make up your instructions <laughs> so i don't know if it's better or worse 
<sighs> hi, Ish. Hi, Dan. Hi, doggies. Hi, Darren. Calvin. Welcome. DJ Stumpy. Yes. Okay. So it goes notch and then the dots and then you're supposed to gather between the dots. I guess I just really don't want you getting the gather stitches into your notched area. But Okay. Um Did I forget any comments? Okay. All right. I'm just avoiding sewing another row cuz my hem completely straight. As I go up, I'm getting a little off here and there because, um, yes. So by the end of it, this side is lower than this side, but it still gives me the exact comb that I want. So I'm not really stressed out about this grid being slightly off. This one is straight and it's good enough. I'm going to think I'm going to put another row right above it. So I have two cones at the top. I may do a third. We'll see if it's needed or if it's just exasperating the, the issues. So I'm not super stressed about this because remember how earlier I was talking about doing a layer in between because of these steps and I, here, let me pull this. So if you're going down this, you're going to see all of these and I don't want to see that on the outside of fabric. Like even on the inside, you can tell that it's going on. So I want to do a mid layer. Oops. That just lays on top of it and it smooths it all out. So you're not even going to see any of the structure. It's just going to keep it cone. And the important part is cone. <laughs> so the cones of Dagenshire, or what was that? Sh what did he call the? Anyways, it was supposed to be a Parks and Rec joke, but the point is the cone. It needs to be cone. And so I think, yeah. Let me get at least one more row of boning in there. <laughs> and then we'll start and try and do the um, vertical rows. Oh, look it, it's been, how long has it been since I started my stream? Uh, I don't know. Oh, it's been an hour and 20 minutes. So I'm going longer than I've gone all week, but I want to get this part over with and get on to the funner part. about that okay going to use a lot of this stuff. I'm really glad that I got the big pack, the 50 yards. And now I can start making corsetry because honestly the only reason that I haven't done boned corsets yet is because I just never got any boning. So it's just another thing to go out and buy. But now I have no excuses. Okay. Hi Bruno, you want to come say hi? Bruno's here. He's sitting here at my feet. Being a good boy. Yeah. You smell like you've licked out of the pond. Okay. DJ Stumpy says, I have trouble under 
withstanding the destructions. But hey, it's only the second pattern I'm trying and the second sewing project. So I must enjoy being in the deep and bugging everyone with quests. <laughs> I know the feeling. That's how you get good. Do it. Um, so give yourself a little grace because you have to remember these patterns were created by English majors, not necessarily by sewists. People who write the patterns and the instructions are doing their very best to convey sewing concepts to us. And even teachers in college would have a hard time struggling. Like, why? Why? Oh, that's why. You know what I mean? It's okay. I understand. It's a little crazy. Watch a million tutorials and then figure out the way you're going to do it anyways. But that's how you learn and that's how you get good. All right, baby, I need to um, sew. You going to let me? No? How about go get me a ball? Go get me your ball. Go get your ball. Okay. Let's do it. All right. Try and keep this as best as I can. Let's do this. You're flat, you're flat. We're going. Did you hear that big loud bang? I'm out of thread. So I have to stop. I actually don't have to worry about the bobbin quite yet. I think I still have bobbin thread. I'm not going to undo it until I have to. Yes, Dan does junk. Kaklunk. <laughs> One thing I didn't really like about a lot of modern computerized sewing machines is the amount of beeping they do at you, especially like you run out of thread and stuff, which is nice reminders, but I'm like, what did I do this time? Why am I in trouble? And I like that this sewing machine, I never feel like I'm actually in trouble, even when it beeps at me. But kaklunk is scary for sure. Let's try this again. Granted, I probably could just use the giant spool of thread, but. stitches back from where I originally was and we'll go from there all right where am I I'm right there so clunky but it's okay
clunk not good exactly ace clunk not good but at least it's just I'm out of thread and not a broken needle sorry Bruno he's sitting right on my feet and I just dropped my boning on him Bruno. Now he's moved. This is going to be crazy. Trying to go through the next step. And we have a bell. Okay. We have a bell. Yeah, if I start going higher, it's going to start more oval. This is where I'm stopping. I think it works. <laughs> it's a very satisfying thwomp sound when straightening the boning out. I completely agree. <sighs> okay. All right, I'll do the vertical boning next time. I'm not doing that today. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm just, it's gonna happen. We'll do it tomorrow. But I can get the next step started. I do wanna do that before I end this, this stream. No more sewing, so I'll put this guy away. But, All right, I have kind of marked out where my um, hands need to go. I thought I had a marker right here and I don't. And I have an unsharpened pencil. Oh well, I'll use pens. Um, 
I want to use this as my pattern. I'm going to make another cone out of this um, drop cloth. And then I need to also make this pattern into a um, princess seam flap. So I kind of want to mark where that would go. Aha, I have a marker. All right, I'm marking the midpoint of my neckline and the midpoint of my hem. just had my measuring tape a second ago. Did I throw it on the ground? No, I didn't. I spy with my little eye, my measuring tape. Hiding from me, okay. Okay, so I drew three lines right here. I'm going to stitch it up to this point. Okay, sorry, what am I talking about? So my inner layer, I'm going to keep it a cone. I'm just gonna do, this layer is gonna stay a cone. I'm gonna cut a layer out of the canvas out of a cone. But my outer fabric, the green fashion fabric that everybody's gonna see, I'm going to have a flap in the front Like this guy, like this cape. Oops, I am pulled up on the lining. I wonder why. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna stitch it and then leave it open. Now this is my seam allowance for this side and my seam allowance for this side for the pattern. The center line 
is going to be my stitch line. So I have that marked out, but I'm going to cut this out of um, canvas today. And then I'm going to get that soaking in starch so tomorrow I can make a crispy cone. What's a crispy cone? You'll find out. Spooky's upset that I dismantled his bed. He was curled up on my pile of tarp. Um, okay. What's been going on with the chat? Sorry about missing everything. Um, oh, nice. Okay. Anyways, let me get this cut out of this fabric, I need a front and I need a back, and then I need to starch it. Hi, Spooky. Can I have this? Can I? No, I can't. do the thing and then disappear. No. Okay. And fold it into quarters. This might not be big enough, but we'll see. It's worth a try. No, nope, not big enough to do in quarters. Oh well. Spooky. Spooky has decided that his spot is now right here. That is okay. my nice scissors. Right tool for the job makes it significantly easier.
in order to save um, fabric. I'm just doing center back seams. And so I have to add seam allowance on. I need this now. Ah, oh, I'm just ever so slightly too short. Oh well, it's okay. Can I have this? Can I have this? But I want this spooky. Can I have it? Oh, thank you. with it hanging off the edge of the table. Just good advice. Okay. This, this, and this. Oh yeah, that's why I didn't do it that way. Because it doesn't fit that way. Let me try this way. Long enough. Yes, it fits that way. Okay, sometimes just getting the fabric flat is important, but it takes a minute. Just... Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, Ace, blocks are less hairy. I use one, two, three blocks to hold my material down. Felicia uses pets. <laughs> Yeah, I like pattern weights. I will use what's available. Spooky, he's no longer available. Toby, no. <laughs> he would actually come. Michael Schnell. Felicia, how do you know when to throw out fabric, such as when the pieces are too small or maybe just bad? 
Okay, so this is a big problem lots of sewists have, especially quilters, because quilters use small, little small pieces, and then the pieces can also then be So wedding dresses, when I worked in wedding dresses, like fabric was cheaper than our time. Like the time that it cost me to cut, sew, and rip something out, it was cheaper just to use more fabric than it was to take the time to rip it apart, put it back together. It would be easier for me just to recut it out and faster to recut it out than it would be to rip it apart and put it back together again some, on things sometimes. So... In manufacturing and production, it's like my time versus the value of like how much the fabric costs. But um, my own personal stash, holding on to garbage just weighs me down. There's just too, not enough space in this world for the amount of scraps that I develop having um, projects. So as I work and as I go, um, the pieces that I cut off like this, go right here, you guys can't see it because it's just off screen, into my garbage bin, they're gone. Anything that's just a little bit, those are awkward pieces, I'm not gonna be able to find the straight of grain, they're not gonna be useful for anything in particular. This is a really cheap fabric. This huge piece was really inexpensive at, the, um, at Harbor Freight. And it's not worth it to keep the little bits and pieces, but the big chunks of it, completely worth it. Hold on. My scrap piles right there and I was looking what things are just in my scrap pile this is in my scrap pile it's a piece of beaded tulle with pearls all over it it's not a square but it's the perfect size for a veil or a bow and this stuff is really expensive per yard so this little bit of it, 100% worth keeping for me. So that remains in my stash. Now this fabric here is definitely a piece that got cut off of something. Now I did not have a lot of this fabric and I was using this fabric for details and pieces and this is a really good vibrant color that I have used the tiny bits of pieces of this red for, I think this is what Krusty's feet are. Yeah. Krusty's feet right here. Ragdoll made out of scraps. He is purely made out of scraps. So this piece I've used a lot. Normally I don't keep scraps this big. They would just go right over there but for some reason this has been a really it doesn't fray and I've been using it so <sighs> there's no hard and fast rule it's like how much do you want to store and so you pick out your container and that's the amount of scrap fabric that I can hold and if it gets full I have to go through and get rid of most of it and only keep what keeps fits in the container otherwise it's just too much So I have cut out my mid layers. I have my pattern marked for my outside layer. Well, I'll, I'll do that later, not today. But I need to
Stay Flow Starch. Water. In case I make a mess. But here's part of the cape. This is my pattern. It has all the marker on it, so that's not going in there. But the other, the front pieces that I cut out, all of this needs to get soaked in starch and then laid out to dry. And then tomorrow I can press it out. It'll be nice and crunchy. And um, we'll be able to put that cone over this cone and make it super fun shaped. Um, so. For light, add six cups of water for each cup of stay flow. For medium, four cups of water. Heavy, half and half, and extra heavy, just use stay flow. So I'm kind of leaning towards the heavy, but I know I don't need it just pure straight starch, so I'm gonna add a little water. Mm, smells like clean laundry. <laughs> yeah. You don't need to feed blocks though, ha, huh. good point. It takes a while to dump out my trash bucket because I often dig through it and find foam pieces I could use. It's currently overfilled. Yeah, no, I feel you. Like it's so, like you needed this thing once and so therefore it, you can't like just get rid of it. I think that's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> Will Connors, Dan does junk. You need a separate trash bin for foam scraps, right? Like that foam scraps, fabric scraps, current project scraps. All right, that's, oh yeah, that's some food. I can just mix it with that. mess. Start with the big piece. You smoosh it and you smoosh it. Oh wow, that just soaked up all of the liquid in there. Let's get the other piece in there too. I should have grabbed a towel and then instead of a whole a whole towel instead of just a little rag, but it's all smooshed. Squeeze off the excess. E Okay. I'm not worried about sewing this together before starching it. I'm gonna starch it and then sew it together. <sighs> because I honestly think it's gonna be easier to starch this way. Um, I have a copy paper box and a five gallon bucket full of foam scraps. Yeah, sewing. Crafting material can get really expensive. And when you're a crafty person, you're very creative and ingenuitive, so. Where others see garbage, you see opportunity.
Princess Leia. But I'm just gonna hang that up there to dry for a second. Eee, I'm sticky now. All right, well, that will sit there and dry overnight. It's best to do this stuff when it's damp, but it, it's not gonna be completely dry by tomorrow. Um, but yes. Do, do, do. Bad Wolf Custom Airbrushing and Decals. Hello, Felicia, I forgot to say earlier, how rude of me. Well, welcome, Big Bad Custom Airbrushing and Decals. Michael Schnell, da, 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 copy paper, same thing here. Copy paper box label foam scraps. Another advantage over block, can dry your hands on a block. <laughs> ah, so, all right, I have been here for two hours now. Normally I've only been doing, committing to an hour, but two hours later I have the structure and support done and I've started on my next layer I got to let that dry and tomorrow I plan on kind of I want to get the base layer finished and I want the top layer at least cut out and stitched together so that I can start doing the details and the fun part so that's my goal for tomorrow um, but thank you guys for joining me on this side quest, working on this fun project. Um, I'm really trying not to work on it when nobody's watching because I don't want to, I want to show you all the nitty gritty details that go into something weird like this because why not? Um, and thank you guys for all the crafting questions. They're fun. They're my favorite topic to geek out about, so keep them coming. Um, thank you, 45th Clown. Thank you again for the stream. You're very welcome. Dan does junk. Got a good amount done today. Yes, I did. Ugh. I got these stupid rows in. Better or worse, they're in and they are done. And soon we won't even look at them. We'll only see the evidence from the inside. That's the goal. Uh, Michael Snell, thank you for all the answers and advice. Greatly appreciated. Thank you for all the good questions. I appreciate it too. Ace, thanks for sharing your day and letting us hang out. Well, thank you for joining me, keeping me company. And yes, um, tomorrow, nine o'clock-ish, nine, nine fifteen, depends on how I get going. Um, yeah. Let's do this. I'll see you guys next time.